This city has everything from ancient Roman ruins, Van Gogh, and even crazy modern towers. Let's take a look at the amazing and historic city of Arles. Before we get stuck into the top 10, here is a very brief summary of the city. Arles is located in the south of France in the historic Provence region. Somewhat equidistant between Marseille, Nîmes and Montpellier, the city is very easy to reach and makes for a great day trip. But as there is so much to see, I would recommend spending at least a night here. The history of the city stretches back to ancient times. From 123 BC it became an important Roman city, and this heritage is evident everywhere in the city and will form a significant part of this top 10 with many, many fascinating locations. The city reached its Roman peak in the 4th and 5th centuries. The city remained important even after the Roman era, leaving it with a rich variety of medieval buildings, sitting comfortably alongside those of ancient Rome. In later times, the city declined somewhat, but due to its many magnificent buildings, it became a center of the arts and has a deep association with Vincent van Gogh who lived in the city. The current city has a modern population of about 50,000 people and it was wonderfully quiet when we visited in November. We purchased the Advantage Pass from the tourist office which gives free access to six monuments and four museums, most of which we will visit in this video. It's totally worth the price and is highly recommended. Right, let's get into the top 10. The city has a totally epic Roman arena. This place is going to make you feel like General Maximus as you roam around this awesome UNESCO World Heritage Building. I can almost hear the crowd roar. It was built in 90 AD and could hold over 20,000 spectators. It is incredibly well preserved and can still be used for events today. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the arena was bricked up and fortified, turning it into a small war town with space for about 200 dwellings and churches. This is when it acquired its distinctive medieval towers. The residents were gradually moved out in the 19th century and the arena was mostly restored. Today you can visit the interior for a small fee, which is totally worth it as you will be free to explore every level of this amazing building, where you'll get these great views. Located just around the corner from the arena is the first century Roman theatre. In ancient times this place could hold about 8,000 spectators and it is incredibly well preserved and it looks like it can still be used today. The wider site around the theatre is full of ruins and an incredible collection of building fragments giving just a hint of how grand this site must once have been. The next location on our list is the Church of Santa Trophim. This mostly Romanesque building was built in the 11th and 12th centuries and was a cathedral until 1801 when the bishop's seat was moved to another city. The main entrance has an exquisitely detailed central portal that is considered a gem of Romanesque architecture, where it shows the story of the apocalypse as well as other biblical scenes. The interior is free to enter and has a high, somewhat dark nave but explore further into the aisles and apse to discover many fascinating side chapels full of light and decoration. Attached to the church but separate and requiring a small fee to enter are some superb Gothic cloisters. As well as the actual cloisters, there are some attached rooms and it's even possible to walk on the roof to get some great views of the church and surrounding buildings. The church and cloisters sit on a lovely old square where you can see a Roman obelisk. But also on this square is the ancient Roman crypt of Porticus, 
which can be entered by the town hall for a small fee. Six metres under street level, these tunnels were built as the foundations for the old Roman Forum in the 1st century BC. They are dark and a little spooky, especially if there is no one else around. But we really enjoyed exploring these fascinating old tunnels, and I'm sure you will too. As you explore the wonderful old town of Ars, you will no doubt notice many references to the famous artist Vincent van Gogh, who lived in the city for about a year between 1888 to 1889. Despite the short time, it was one of the most productive places for the artist, where he painted about 200 paintings. He was eventually joined by his friend and other famous artist Gauguin, and it was in Arles that the famous quarrel between the two resulted in Van Gogh cutting off part of his own ear. Scattered throughout the city, you will find these images of famous paintings in the locations where they were painted. One of the most famous locations where he painted several masterpieces is the courtyard of a hospital he stayed in after cutting off his ear. There is also a modern Van Gogh foundation. Although it does not contain any Van Gogh originals, it's still worth visiting for its many modern artworks and also its lovely rooftop terrace. There is a lot more to ours than just old stuff. In fact, there is this crazy looking and unmissable ultra modern glass tower known as the Luma, which is an art center and gallery space. Situated a short walk from the city centre, it was designed by the famous architect Frank Gehry and opened in 2021. Its reflective glass exterior was inspired by the idea of capturing the light, as seen in the paintings of Vincent van Gogh. The interior is free to enter and full of exhibition spaces, and if you go to the top there are exterior spaces where you can take in these breathtaking views over the city. However, the highlight is the crazy central double slide that allows you to descend quickly from the upper floors to the ground level. Okay, that's enough messing around in modern towers. Now let's get back to the ancient stuff. Situated near to Luma Tower is the Aliscom Roman Necropolis, which is a posh way of saying it's a Roman cemetery. Originally outside the old city walls, it continued to be used well after Roman times. Although somewhat damaged over time, the site is now a very peaceful space with rows of old sarcophagi leading to the unfinished church of Saint Honorat, with peaceful interiors that can be explored. The overall location is one of those places that we weren't too sure we wanted to enter, but after looking around this lovely and tranquil place, we were really glad we made the effort, and I hope you do as well as it's not to be missed. Heading back into the city and towards the direction of the river, the next location is the Musée Ritu. No idea if I pronounced that correctly. This museum contains a collection of paintings by local artist Jacques Ritu, as well as a great collection of works by other artists, including some drawings by Picasso. The museum is inside a 15th century former Grand Priory building, which in itself is quite fascinating to look around. It was acquired by the artist who lived and worked there until his death in 1833. Next to the museum are the remains of some ancient Roman bathhouses named after the Emperor Constantine as they were built during his reign in the 4th century. Although very ruined, the remains still give a good impression of the grandeur of these former baths. A rather long but nice walk from the baths along the banks of the River Rhone, you will eventually end up in the amazing modern building which houses the Museum of Ancient Isles and Provence. The interior contains a large and fascinating collection of Roman artefacts. In fact, we think it's probably our favourite of all the Roman museums we visited in France. You can check my other videos on Nîmes and Lyon for some others. The highlight of the collection is the amazingly well-preserved Roman barge, which was discovered under the river in 2004. There is a model showing this to give an idea, and the barge itself can be walked around to see it from all angles. Also in the museum are many scale models of many of the Roman locations in Arles, giving you a good idea of what they once looked like. There is also an extensive collection of mosaic floors, statues, pillars, carvings, and many other interesting Roman objects. We were a little short of time and had to rush through the museum and would certainly have liked to spend more time here, so I recommend setting aside a good few hours for this place. So that's it for my top 10. I hope this guide helps you decide what to visit in Arles. It's a stunning city and totally worth it. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything interesting or if I horribly mispronounced any of the French words. 
Thanks for watching. Cheerio.